Here's a coding interview question from Amazon. It is find the number of negative integers in a row-wise and column-wise sorted matrix. So here's an example. As you can see, the numbers in the matrix are sorted row-wise and column-wise. And here we have four negative numbers. So our function, let's say func, should return four in this case. Here's a naive solution for this problem. We'll just start from the first row and we'll count the number of negative numbers one by one. So we find three negative numbers here. And in the second row, we find just one negative number. And in the third row, in the last row, we find zero negative numbers. So we add them up and we get four in this case. The worst case scenario for this solution is when we have all negative numbers in the matrix, and in that case, we'll need to traverse all the elements in the array or matrix. So the time complexity for this solution would be big of n times m, where n is the number of rows we have, and m is the number of columns we have in the matrix. Here's the optimal solution for this problem. We'll start from the top right corner, and we'll find the position of the last negative number in the first row. And using that information, we'll find the position of the last negative number in the second row, this one. And so on, until we get to the last row, or we don't have any more negative numbers to count. For the first row, the position of the last negative number is negative one, is two, so we'll know that the number of negative numbers in this row is just three. And same thing with the second row. The position of the last negative number is zero, so the number of negative numbers is just one here. And we have zero negative numbers in the last row. We'll add them up, and we get the answer, four. The time complexity for this solution is an order of n plus m, where again, n is the number of rows, and m is the number of columns we have. So here's the optimal solution in code. We're defining our function here with the matrix and the number of rows and the number of columns as input. We're initializing count to zero, which we're going to use to keep track of the number of negative numbers we've seen so far, and i to zero, which is our row index, and j to m minus one, which is our column index. So we'll use i and j to keep track of which element we're looking at. So while j is larger than or equal to zero, so we still have more negative numbers to count, and i is less than n, so we haven't got to the last row yet. If the element we're looking at, m i j, is a negative number, then we found the last negative number in the row, so we increment the count with j plus one, and then we go to the next row. If the number we're looking at is not a negative number, then we'll move our pointer to the left, or we'll try the same thing with the number on the left, and we'll repeat this process over and over again until we get the total number of negative numbers in this matrix and then we're gonna return that. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to check out the original article on Geeksport Geeks in the description below.